Tchau! Ah, another busy summer day. You decide to wander down to Muscle Beach to work out. Your eyes oogling babes. Lost in your work, you nearly miss the Hollywood limousine that pulls in behind you. As the limo stops, a beautiful blonde emerges from the sunroof to announce... My name is Shallow, and I'm looking for one very good man. Out of the way, Bob. Let me at her. Move it. To appear on the new TV show, Stallions. Well, I guess you'll have to do... What's your name? My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> oh, hell. Good enough for who it's for. After a few glorious moments in the back of the limo, in which you act out your favorite scene from No Way Out while Shallow acts out her favorite scene from Ice Station Zebra, you arrive at the studio and are escorted directly to the set where an episode of Stallions is being taped. And don't worry about thinking up answers while we're taping. We took the answers you gave us earlier and had our writers heat them up a little bit to make them acceptable to our uh, sophisticated viewers. So when it's your turn to answer, just read your cue cards and you'll be just fine. But wait, Miss Shallow. I didn't give you any answers earlier. I haven't gone out with these women. In fact, I've never even seen them before. Oh, don't worry, Lasser. Stallion number two is going to lose anyway. Dope. Places, people. Places. Lights. Hi. From somewhere near Hollywood, California, it's the latest and greatest in embarrassment television. 
Stallions! Today, featuring three hot young fillies from the Mensa chapter of Downtown Pass. And also featuring two of the hungest stallions we could fry. And now, let's all give a big winnie for the star of our show, Biff Stiff! Welcome back, everybody. Let's meet our contestants. Stallion number two is a professional bodybuilder and part-time out-of-work concrete form dismantler who credits his physical success to Herbivite. Let's hear it for Larry Laffer. Stallion number one is also a professional bodybuilder and an apprentice condom sizer who guarantees that around him, women come first. Really slam them together for Rock Hard. As you regular fans know, both of these stallions recently had a dream date with each of our three lovely fillies. Cocktails at sunset, a romantic dinner under the stars, dancing by moonlight, followed by a trip back to the stall for a little heavy breathing. Oops, I'm sorry, I meant heavy breathing. <laughs> and now, let's meet our three little fillies. Philly number one is a nuclear chemist specializing in zero-gravity liquid fuel propulsion systems who has a mainframe computer right in her very own home. Yes, that's right. She really is a rocket scientist. How about some animal noises for Dr. Sharla Main? Philly number two also hails from Pasadena, where she leads a think tank specializing in international economics, monetary systems, and currency stabilization. Get it off for Dr. Sharla O'Hara. And finally, Philly number three is one hunk of prime horse flesh. With PhDs in marine biology, subatomic nuclear physics, and film studies, a woman who expects more from her man than just intelligent conversation, hoot it up for a while for Dr. Sharla Tan. I'm sure you all know the rules, so let's get right to the game. Larry, you're first. Me? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really prepared. Ah, uh, what the hell. Uh, I'll take Greek mythology for $500, Alex. That's about all of this we need to see, isn't it? Let's fast forward. And we're back with our contestants. Larry, what now? Um, could I buy a vowel, Pat? Yikes, this is not going well. Let's cut to the chase. And the winner of today's show, Rock Hard! Rock and Charla win an all-expense-paid cruise down the lovely Mexican Riviera with stops at Tijuana and Juarez. And our second prize goes to Larry Lapper. Immediately after the show, you'll travel by Studio Limo to the exclusive health spa and resort La Costa Lata, where you'll spend a wonderful two, some expenses paid, weeks. Thanks for watching, folks, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow for another episode of... Stallions! Rock, honey, here's your tickets for the cruise. I'm afraid Charlotte won't be going with you. She opted for the cash payoff instead. But you won't be lonely. I'll be waiting for you in your cabin. Whatever. You come with me, doofus. That's Laffer. <laughs> Here's your limo, Lasser. Enjoy the ride. Wow! What a Cherry 73 pacer! Finally, your luck has changed, Larry. Two weeks at an exclusive health spa filled with gorgeous women. La Costa Lada, here I come!
Rummaging around in this morning's room keys, you grab the one that feels the least sticky. The woman behind the front desk is a real knockout. Although you can only see down to her waist, what you see is what you like. Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'm here as a guest of Stallions, that famous television show. How do you do, sir? I'm Gammy Boisule, head of human services and customer relations here at La Costalada. My job is to make sure your visit here is everything your heart desires. And less. I suppose we could begin by checking into my room. I do have a room, don't I? Oh, but of course, Mr. Laffer. Stallions has taken care of everything for you. Here's your key. You're in room 201, one of our finest suites right at the top of those stairs, conveniently located near the ice machine, elevator, and kitchen exhaust fans. I'm sure you'll find it well worth the price you paid. Say, baby, what time do you, uh, get off? <sighs> Usually right after I get in bed. Oh, uh, uh, what was the question again? How about we get together later? What do you say? Oh, no thank you, Mr. Laffer. My life consists of work and exercise. I really don't have time for romance. Just work and exercise, huh? What a waste. Hey, no cracks about my waist, okay? I can't help it. God knows I've tried to reduce. In fact, that's why I came here to La Costalada in the first place, to fulfill my dream. You have a dream? Yes, I do. Would you like to talk about it? Yes, I would. My dream was to work here long enough to afford treatment at La Costalada's exclusive cellulite drainage salon. Women came here from around the world to be treated by Dr. Swinebutt. But he was so expensive, I could never afford a complete makeover. Dr. Swinehart, did you say? Who's he? <sighs> the genius who created La Costa Lada's Cellulite Drainage Salon's marvelous machine. One suck and you were better than new. Yeah, that's what I always say. But, alas, shortly after I arrived here, Dr. Swinebutt was sued for malpractice, and his cellulite drainage salon shut down. Since then, his magnificent machine has fallen into disrepair. Oh, how I long for those halcyon days. Say, Gam Baby, I've got an idea. Uh, what if I... Your friend, Larry Laffer, <laughs> could repair this little machine of yours. You know, fix it up, make it right. Wouldn't that make me your friend for life? Or at least one night. Ooh, oh, Larry. If you could do that, I'd be the happiest woman on Earth. <laughs> and I bet I could make you the happiest man on Earth. The Blue Spa Services card reads... The Red Housekeeping Services card reads... The Pink Telephone Services card reads... Housekeeping, may I help you? 
This is Larry Lapper. <laughs> yeah, I notice you have something called a turn-down service. Is this something I need to request? Usually I have no trouble getting turned down. Yes, you do, Mr. Lapper. I'll make a note of it. This evening, we leave a little gift for you and your pillow. Oh, boy. I love presents. Housekeeping, may I help you? Hi. Yeah, it's me, Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I thought I requested your exclusive turn-down service. Why, yes, you did, Mr. Laffer. Someone will be up to your room very soon. But perhaps you didn't know. Our maids have strict instructions never to disturb the guests while they are in their rooms. I'm sure once you leave the room, the maid will slip in unobserved and take care of you. I guess I'm just not used to fine service. <laughs> okay, thanks. My pleasure. Finally, the right place. Yuck, the water coming out of the sink is brown. Yes, hello, this is Building Maintenance, Landscaping and Grounds. May I please to be helping you? Hello? There's brown water coming out of my bathroom sink. Is there anything you can do about it? Ah, yes, but of course, Mr. Laffer. I am so sorry. Let me send up one of our best men. Right away, pronto. Soon, quick, quick. Oh, I'm pleased to be accepting our sincere apology for any inconvenience and perhaps if you are suffering. Ah, perhaps I can make some adjustment to your bill. Please, just a moment while I check the computer. Oh, I see. Never mind. Uh, Mr. Laffer, I'll be sure to send up somebody sometime, maybe in a few hours, maybe never. And please, don't bother calling back. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. I bet I could use a towel sometime. I could use these for tracing paper. I can always use some more dental floss. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny? You haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. She was probably going to give you a fresh roll of toilet paper today anyway. I'll bet the maid was going to leave me a washcloth. Use this when you want to make a good impression. Hand cream might be good for those itchy palms of yours. You grab the condom from your pillow. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple adjustable wrench. Say, I bet he'd never miss a simple file.
I got your water problem taken care of, Mr. Leper. You won't have any more troubles now. Thank you. If I do, I'll ask for you. How did I know that? Good idea. You bend over the pot and carefully install an ass gasket. Good idea. You wet the washcloth in the water. Housekeeping, may I help you? Yes, my bathroom is totally unstocked. Uh, don't you give lots of little free thingies here? You know, shower caps, tiny bottles of shampoo, shoehorns, stuff like that? Why no, we don't. Well, how about toilet paper, towels, washcloths, you know, I should get those, right? Yes, you should. I'll send the maid up to service you right away. All right. That would be fine. Tell her to just barge right in, regardless of the condition I'm in. Oh, our help never enters a guest room while someone is there. Strict policy. Simple courtesy, you know. Also, it prevents lawsuits from schmucks who want to accost our maids. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose I'll head down to the pool now. Good. The sooner you leave, the sooner you'll get serviced. The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. Use this when you want to make a good impression. Sorry, come back when my batteries wear down. Could this be the missing cord? You take a closer look at the lovely young thing sitting at the right front makeup table. Good day, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Why, hello. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. You may call me Chablis. I'm rather new around here. <clears throat> Have you been here long? Oh, not that long. Are you going to the big weight loss spring formal? Weight loss spring formal? Uh, what's that? <laughs> Sounds like a prom. Right you are, Larry. I've been searching everywhere for a new dress, but I just can't find one with that, um, certain something I crave. 
shopping? Here? Where? I haven't seen a single store. Oh, they're here, all right. You're just not a shopper like me. My motto is Veni, Vidi, Visa. I came, I saw, I shopped. So, uh, you'd like a new dress, huh? Oh, yes. If I could only find something brilliant, why, I'd... I'd... Hell, I don't know what I'd do. But what's the use? I'll just have to wear something old, I suppose. You never can tell when I might want to learn what other wonderful features are available here at lovely La Costalata. This tile looks loose. Oh my god! Who's that? Is someone here? Now you really need a shower. Using the plumber's wrench, you loosen the large bolt holding the video camera in place. Then turn the camera so it's looking directly into the women's shower. Too bad you can't see the monitors now. At least you've given someone a good time. to slip out of this warm, caressing mud for a moment, Larry. I'm Charlotte Donay, but you may call me Shaw. I hope you'll excuse the way I'm dressed. Oh, I think you'll look just perfect. <laughs> yep, never seen better. You are one of the most beautiful women I've ever met, Char. Oh, darling, you're so sweet to say that. But really, I'm just a simple, electricity-loving woman. Just give me a few heavy-duty details, and I'm set for the evening. You don't mean that literally, do you? I mean, you're not... <laughs> One of those, you know, um, those. Those? Oh, heaven no. Let's just say I love my stimulation wherever I find it. But I am totally partial. I prefer the real thing above the artificial every time. What the hell are we talking about? 
Is there anything you'd like, Char? Um, perhaps I could buy you a drink? Drink? Oh, no. The attendant here keeps us all in fruit juice. But you know, there is one thing. Anything, babe. Anything your breast and, and, I mean, your heart desires. There's one thing I need that I haven't been able to find at La Costa Lada. Oh, tell me. Anything you want. I promise. If I can get it, it'll be yours. Oh, that's great. And the way I see it, when I get what I want, then you get what you want. <gasps> what exactly is it you want, my sweet Chardonnay? Simple. I could really use six D sales for my um, late night friend. Huh? She has a battery powered David Letterman? Huh, well, that sounds easy enough, Char. Why, well, sure, Larry. After all, how hard can it be? Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. I'm off, Char, but uh, I'll be right back with your batteries. Hot shower always makes me feel like a new man. Me too, sweetheart! And here I am! Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer? <laughs> hey, here you go, Rosie. I'd like to give you a little something special. I can see how much you enjoy flowers. Oh, gracias, Lawrence. They are most beautiful. I'll put them right over here. And in return, I'd like to give you a little something special, mi nuevo amigo. Hey, Larry, finally you're going to get lucky. And with this hot Spanish senorita, too. Please do examine closely the painting on the wall over there. I believe you will surely enjoy that which will follow. I will make you experience feelings you never knew before. That wouldn't be hard. You will feel like a new man. Good, because the old man wasn't getting any. Why am I looking at a painting? Why is she running that Harley with the carb too rich? Are you ready for a good time? Oh, I've been ready for 30 years. I'm all yours, Rosé. 
Okay, honey. Drop those pants. Finally, Larry. But shouldn't she at least dim the lights? Wow, what's that? Rosé, uh, exactly what does high colonic mean? Isn't it wonderful? Am I right? Isn't it a feeling you've never felt before? Ah! Rosé, I've never felt more emotions in such a short period of time. Yes, I know. All my customers say that. But here, Lawrence, allow me to give you a little something in return. No! Not again! Oh, you silly! No! This! Why, Rosé! What a beautiful orchid! It's... it's... it's so prom night! Thank you, Larry. Come back soon so we can do this again, okay? You know, I don't feel pooped anymore. See? And also, you are not so full of sheet. What did she say? When are you gonna learn to stay away from women, sweetie? You grab yourself a swimming pool float in the shape of a beaver. And like all men, of course, you can always use a little beaver. Seeing a hint of color beneath the ice, you dig away until you uncover a fresh orange left over from breakfast. It seems to be in surprisingly good shape. I might as well take this orange. You never know when a guy might want something to, uh, suck on. Of course, digging through the trash is always a good idea in an Al Lowe game. Hey, look! Somebody threw away a five-gallon can of lard. Cleverly realizing the truck's tire is a source of pressurized air, you press the beaver's inflator onto the tire's valve stem. I, uh, hope that was good for you, too. Oh, boy! Free matches! Sneaking over to the edge of the pool and leaning way out, you inquire about that pair of sunglasses lying on the bar. Anybody lose these? Well, guess they're mine now. You open the sunglasses case. 
Hey, nice pair of shades. Perfect for lounging around poolside. These must be deluxe sunglasses. They come complete with their very own cute little white polishing cloth. You deftly attach the dental floss to the sunglasses polishing cloth to form a rather small European style swimsuit. people are getting something from you. Uh, what is it? Um, may I get something too? Sir, besides the important job of guarding the lives here in the pool, I'm also responsible for maintaining strict security over our combination high diving tower and bungee jumping platform. The gate to the tower which you may have noticed over there, well it's kept securely locked at all times. Uh, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, is allowed admittance without proving their qualifications to yours truly. Guest safety is our first concern here at La Costa Lada. We can't afford to have any of our paying customers injured in any way, you understand. Oh, I'm not a paying customer. I'm here on a freebie. Oh, well, here you go, pal. Good idea. That lifeguard will never notice you making an impression of his key in your bar of soap from this height. Now you know why they call this impressive soap. It's a good thing something around here knows how to leave a good impression. Yes, you carefully file this key with your bastard file, using the impressed soap for a pattern. Now you have your very own tower key. That really hurt. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, you. Bring back the tower key before you go swimming. Other guests may want to dive too. Uh, paying guests, I might add. Here's your key back, Mr. D. Or may I call you Billy? Preferably. Don't call me. You decide to order a drink. Yes, sir. You slapped? Yes. I'd like to order a drink for myself and the, uh, <coughs> beautiful young lady floating beside me. Very good, sir. Do you have any identification? Oh, yes, Mr. Thomas, sir. I remember your room number from last week. <laughs> All the girls were talking about the quantity of beverages you ordered. Jim, what would you like? Ah, yes, sir. What would you like? I'd like a tequila sunrise, and uh, how about a King Alphonse for the lady? I'm sorry, sir. This is a health spa. We only have healthful drinks here. Instead of that poison you ordered, I'll bring you something better. A seaweed sunrise, 
and um, a king alfalfa for the lady. Seaweed? Ugh. Um, how about a frozen daiquiri? Frozen daiquiri? Oh, you mean a frozen broccoli. Coming right up. Here you are, sir. That will be fifty dollars. Like I care. As long as you charge it to my room. Here you go, babe. Enjoy your drink. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, these drinks are watered down. What did you expect? I have to carry them underwater. I couldn't help but notice you hanging out here at the pool bar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Laughter? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I'm Marilee. Is your drink okay, Mare? Oh, sure. Good enough. I'm not picky. I just try to stay happy all the time. You certainly have a beautiful smile, Mare. You must be enjoying yourself immensely. Oh, no. I'm miserable, actually. In fact, I'm more than just a little pissed off at La Costalada's silly management and their strict adherence to local laws. Why, Mare, whatever is the matter? Is there anything I can do? Oh, Larry, you're so sweet to be concerned about little me. But really, there's nothing you can do. This monkey I've got to carry on my own back. No one can break an addiction for you. I must handle it by myself. Addiction? Local laws? Mare, are you in some sort of trouble? Is it drugs? All right. Here's our chance to add some socially redeeming value to this little saga. Drugs? How gauche. It's nothing so mundane as that. No, it's worse. Far worse. Larry, I, I may as well be honest with you. I, I suffer from... From... I... I... I suffer from... B.A. B.A.? It's... Bungee addiction! You're addicted to luggage tie-downs? No, silly. Bungee jumping. I want to do nothing in life but jump. Well, it started simply enough. A uh, first small hit at a friend's party, then cranes at local county fairs, later a few bridges here and there. But I got to the point where I had to have more, constantly more, higher, deeper, longer. I was going down 40 or 50 times a day. I graduated to balloons, but even that wasn't enough. But then, I heard about La Costa Lata. Here? This place? <laughs> Get your head out of the bikinis, Larry, and take a look straight up. I don't get it. You should be overjoyed to have a setup like this. What's the problem? These provincial thinkers, that's what's wrong. They have some sort of stupid law that limits you to ten jumps per day. I'm not sure, but... Uh... Isn't there something in the Constitution about this? Yeah, in the part about the right to arm bears, I think. Oh, that there was. And do you know what's worse? You mean, there's something worse than only getting to bungee jump ten times per day? Uh, what is it? Well, I've, I've gotten to the point where I can only become sexually aroused if I'm high in the air, tied up with long rubber ropes. Mm hmm. Look what I have for you, Mare. Your own personal copy of the key to the bungee jumping tower. Ah! Oh, Larry! My hero! You're just wonderful! Okay, 
Hey, meet me tonight, late, after everyone else is asleep, and we'll go down together. Gee, I wonder if we could just cut to later tonight. Later that night. I hope your key works as well as that transition. I thought we were going to have to wait around here until nightfall or something. The coast is clear, Mare. Open the gate. Ladies first. <laughs> Come on, Larry. Only a few hundred feet to go. <sighs> How about we take a little break? No way, Larry. Come on. A little exercise will do you a world of good. Besides, wait till you see the view from the top of the bungee tower at night. Oh, my God. How high are we? Oh, yes, Larry. That feels wonderful. Mmm, Larry. I'm beginning to feel that old feeling again. Oh, yes. Larry, hurry. Get undressed. Now. Get me, Larry. I'm bound up and bound for love. Okay, Mayor. I'm coming. <laughs> Not without me, I hope. Mayor, I hope you're not gonna jump tonight and leave me alone up here. Oh, no, silly. There's only one thing I enjoy more than bungee jumping. You may think I'm an airhead who's never had an original thought. What? Why would I think that? Especially now. But I do know something about life and love and happiness. Well, really, Mare, that's not important right now. Oh, but it's something I simply must say. In fact, I'll whisper it in your ear right now. What? My God, Marilyn! I'm dumbfounded! That's amazing! You are so wise! I'm ultimate truth! I'm... I'm... <laughs> Isn't that just like a man? Always has to get off first! Quiet, Larry. You'll wake the entire resort. Now you've done it. You've awakened the entire resort. Everybody is staring out their windows at you, foolishly bungee jumping in the middle of the night wearing nothing but embarrassment. You are exhausted after your all-night naked bungee jumping session with Merrily. You could say you're at the end of your rope. Daryl is so absorbed in your new television spectacular, you are able to remove the handcuffs without his detection.
Since nobody's watching, I could build a sand castle right here. Hey, what's this? While your sand castle will win no prizes, your diggings have revealed an ancient whale oil lamp buried in the sand. I'd better cover this up before anyone sees how dorky it looks. Maybe I'll join in. I haven't worked out in the last three games. You! Yes, you! Keep up! Hey, white suit! You're falling behind! Isn't letting you keep up! No breasts! You've got no rhythm at all! <laughs> That's it! Forget it! Class dismissed! Everybody out! All right! Now that those girls are out of here, <laughs> I've got the aerobics babe all to myself! Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, little man. My name is Cavarici Poirnay. And based upon your proven athletic abilities, your name should be on my class roster. Gee, thanks. I guess. I couldn't help but notice your employee ID badge, Cav. What a lovely likeness of you. Oh, that? I don't really like that photo. I was, how you say, having a bad moose day? I suppose you're right. It doesn't hold a candle to the real thing. I guess I just like the way it dangles way out there in space. <laughs> Twisting slowly, slowly in the wind. You're rather funny for a man. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> Larry, you are a weird one. But I like weird. Oh no. Oops. <laughs> Look, your badge got caught on my finger. Okay, now I have to amputate my finger. <laughs> or you can give me your badge. Either way, you pick. <laughs> I don't care. I have to admit, in spite of your Y chromosome, I find you rather funny. Well then, take the badge. I get in anywhere I want to and without no stinking badges. <laughs> In fact, I have an idea. Let's meet later today for a sauna together, hmm? Bring your best girl and meet me in the Swedish sauna. We'll uh, double day, hmm? Excellent! Now, who will I get to play the role of my best girl? And what will Kat bring as her date? How you doing? What? You! Climb on! Lay down and shut up, boy! My name is Christina Priscilla Diana Van Dyke. Oh. Do I have to remember all that? But the only people who called me that are dead now. Oh. You may, and in fact will, call me... Thunderbird!
Hello, miss. I couldn't help but notice the muscles in your inner thighs. What? I mean, I couldn't help notice the uh, magic in your intense eyes. Nice outfit. When are you going to stop having your mommy pick out your clothes? Oh, she doesn't pick out my clothes anymore. I think a 90s guy has to know when to bypass the fickle whims of Paris haughty couture and stick with the stylish lines of a true classic. Hence, the white leisure suit has become, how may I say it, something of a symbol of mine. Hmm. I see. I gotta admit, it's you. I thank you. You don't know how many people comment on it. Oh, I can imagine. What brings you to La Costa Lada, little boy? Oh, I'm here on a junket, actually. <laughs> you see, I was one of the winners of a recent broadcast of Stallions, that hot new TV show for hot new studs like, um, what? So I suppose you'll be here for the two-week visit, instead of the weekend the first place guys receive. Gosh, Thunderbird, you sure do know your TV shows. I should. How do you think I got here? So, babe, um, what do you say you and me get to know each other a little better? Honey, there's not much about you I need to know. And there's not much about me you care to learn. But I suppose a little session later on would be okay. I just have one problem, Larry. Uh, problem? Uh, what problem, T-Bird? That's Thunderbird to you, Larry. Oh, my problem is simple. I'm having so much fun here that I wore out my only pair of handcuffs. So, if you want to have fun with me, you'll have to bring me a little hardware. Look what I brought you, Miss Thunderbird. A genuine pair of chrome-plated, serial-numbered, auto-latching, inexpensive resort cop handcuffs. I only hope you'll find them acceptable. Jeez, Taiwan again. You know how fast the chrome wears off these babies? Oh, well, at least you made the effort. Tell you what. I'll go back to my room and get dressed up. You stop by later. And don't take too long, either. You got it? But I... Shut up! I'm out of here. And don't be late! Uh, but, uh... Uh, but, uh, what room are you in? Excuse me. Hey, hey, driver, stop! You're talking to me? Come on, get on board. Hang on. We have reached the end of the line. Please watch your step getting off the tram. And thank you for writing Art's tram line. Ah, uh, please step out of the way. I, I need to turn my tram around. Hey, Art. You want a match? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That'd be good. You know what they say, a woman is only a woman 
but a good cigar is a smoke. Who said that anyway? I don't know. I wonder what this baby looks like under the hood. Clever! You use the wrench to disconnect the power cable from the motor. That ought to cause this guy some trouble. Look out! Here comes the driver. Hey, what the? Ugh, hot spin gone by for this stupid ass tram. It's dark in there. Where's my light? Now, let me see. Whoa! Excuse me, sir. May I be of assistance? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, something happened to my motor. Not getting any juice, and I don't seem to be able to hold up the hood, aim the light, and still work on the air. Uh, maybe I can help you. How about if I hold your flashlight for you? Sure. <laughs> Anything is better than this. There. Does that help? Yeah. Perfect. Now I can see what's going on under here. It looks like some butthead disconnected my power cable. But I think I can force fit it back on there. Yeah, got it. <laughs> now let's see if it works. Hey, <laughs> good as new. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your help. Hey, hey, I, I gotta be going now. You deftly open the flashlight, extract Art's batteries, then close it up again, all without him noticing a thing. Slick move, Larry. Oh, 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 hey, hey, I almost forgot. I need my flashlight back. There you go. Boy, that sure is a powerful flashlight. Yep, titanium alloy case, Fresnel lens, leather carrying case, and six D-cells worth of pure candle power. See you later, and if you ever need a ride, just say so. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. The tram is just leaving for Kingman, Barstow, Cucamonga, and all points west. Breathlessly, you insert Cavaricci Varney's employee ID card into the slot on the electronic lock and hope there's no careful photo checking required. The gate slides open with a clang. Woolen's world of leather? I'll be right there. Oh, it's you. I was, um, <laughs> expecting someone else first. But don't worry. Thanks for coming, Larry. I'm so happy to see you again. Uh, nice room, Thunderbird. 
I've never seen a place quite like this before. I bet I've got a lot of things here you've never seen before. Oh boy. I've fixed you a drink. Help yourself. It's on the table. I can tell how much you enjoy your gold chains. Yes, I, I do. Uh, to me, they're a sign of virility. Whatever. Allow me to add a little ring around your collar. What? Uh, do I really need to wear this? <laughs> it feels like a dog collar. It is, my naughty little puppy. But it is a very nice collar for a very nice little doggy. What have you gotten yourself into this time, Larry? May I help you undress? Well, I... Uh... <sighs> Say, what the hell kind of date is this anyway? Down on your hands and knees, dog. Sit, boy. Sit up. Speak. Woof. Louder. I can't hear you. Woof. Yes, that's right. You're the puppy dog, and I'm the mommy dog. Well, you are quite the bitch. You awaken from an especially bad nightmare with a start. No! Oh, thank heaven. It was only a dream. Oh, really? Then where did you get that dog collar? Free matches! Oops! Hey, what happened to my mic? How am I supposed to perform with no PA system? I bust for a stage and he's coming right away, okay? Excuse me, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Would you say your name was Cowboy? Larry something? Laffer. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter, huh? My name's Burgundy. I'm pleased to meet you, Burgundy. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed your singing. Why, thank you, little fella. You're kind of cute in a cur dog puppy kind of way. You know, I've never heard anyone sing the blues quite like you do, Burgundy. I sure hope not. Hell, honey, I ain't no goddamn blues singer. I'm country, through and through, and I'm proud of it. Country singer, huh? Then why are you working here in the blues bar? Why, I'm just killing time singing here while I'm waiting for my big break. You see, lots of record company execs like to hang out at ritzy spas like this and... Or at least so I've been told. Could I buy you a drink, Burgundy? She, uh, yes, you sure could. 
but none of this faggy, citified dog drippings they serve in here. Man, could I go for a couple of lone stars? Yeah. Hey, Burgundy, I found you some beer. Cold ones? Long necks? Yeah, boy, let me at them. <laughs> That sure hits the spot. Breathlessly, you insert Cavaricci Varney's employee ID card into the slot on the electronic lock and hope there's no careful photo checking required. The gate slides open with a clang. Oops. Oh, damn it to hell, there it goes again. Hey, you gonna fix this thing? Come on, Gary's on his way, Burgundy. He should be here soon. You look to me like you're still thirsty, Burgundy. How about another sixer? Beer? Yeah! Hoo! I'm so sick of this crap they're serving in here, I could just puke. Thank you, little buddy. <laughs> you know, I really love this stuff. <laughs> Man, there ain't nothing like a good cold one every now and then. It's so hot in here. <laughs> Why, darling, excuse little old me. <laughs> Damn, does it seem hot in here to you? I'm burning up. <laughs> ah, damn it, Larry, I gotta have a break. Ain't you got privilege to the sauna? Why, yes, Burgundy. I believe the sauna is open to all guests. Well, it sure ain't open to us performers. I could sure use a nice sweat about now. What do you say you and me get all sweaty together? In fact, I've been looking for a date to the sauna tonight for quite a while. I'm going to meet some uh, uh, friends there later on. I'd be pleased if you would be my guest. Sounds good, little buddy. Just give me a minute so as I can get out of this damn heavyweight sparkly dress. You go on ahead. I'll meet you there in about two shakes of a cow's tit. How colloquial. Guess she's going to take that sixth beer with her. Oh, well. Off to the sauna. You decide to hop up on stage and let your star quality shine through. Well, looks like Burgundy won't be needing this again.
Hi, Burgundy. I'm so glad to see you're really here. I'm here all right, honey. Mosey on over and sit down beside little old Burgundy. Whew. It's hotter than Fresno in here. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. Well, I do enjoy a sauna. Um... And especially with a woman as beautiful as you. Me too. Hot and sweaty is perfect. And we're alone. Um, not for long, Burgundy. Remember I told you how um, I, I, I took the liberty of inviting another couple? Uh, here they are now. Uh, Cabarici? Is that you? Hi, Larry. Who's your friend? Cabarici Vornay, meet Burgundy Bodine. Berg, this is Cav. Bonjour. How are you? So, Cav, where's your date? Coming soon? Date? I didn't say anything about bringing a date. But of course you did. No, I asked if you wanted to double date. I consider this doubled. What's the matter, Larry? Can't stand a little competition? Don't tell me, Larry. This is not your first menage à trois. Hey, Larry, I don't know about this kinky crap. I'm just a plain old-fashioned country girl. You didn't say nothing about no menagerie come Troy. Gee, girls, I've never been with two women before, especially two as beautiful as you two. Where do I begin? You're right, Larry. Burgundy is a beautiful woman. Just look at how those delicate beads of perspiration glide down her shoulders across her chest and disappear behind that totally unnecessary white towel. Oh, Cav, you're one to talk. Just look at you. That poor towel of yours is gonna be stretched completely out of shape by your sexy figure. It is getting hot in here. I've got an idea. Why don't one of you move over here to my left side, and then I can put an arm around both of you? That's an idea, Larry. Perhaps we'll do that later. But right now, I want to get to know Burgundy. Berg? I know I've seen you around here. Don't you work in the lounge? Tell me all about yourself. Everything. Oh, there's nothing much to tell. I'm just a simple country girl waiting for my big break in showbiz. Only took the job and I cost a lot as blues bar to fill in time between tours. Why, well, that's fascinating. But what's even more fascinating is watching the light dance in those beautiful eyes of yours. You illuminate the whole room with your smile, mon amour. I was going to say that, Burgundy. You are... sure are pretty. Why, thank you, Cavaricci. Um, would you like me to turn down the temperature in here? Are either of you uncomfortable? Would you like me to rearrange the seating here? Is anybody listening to me? Burgundy, your hair is so beautiful. Soft and manageable, yet holds its shape so nicely. You're fortunate to be so blessed. All oh, this? Anyone can have hair like this? Please don't hate me for my beautiful hair. 
When did I slip into a Pantene ad? Wow, it sure is getting late. <sighs> my, my, look at the clock. Guess we may as well all turn in now. Oh, pal, it is getting warm in here. My silver bracelet's so hot it's burning my wrist. Don't worry about that, Sherry. Let's talk more about you and me, hmm? Oh, Cav, I'm beginning to have the strangest feeling about tonight. Not strange, darling. When things are right between two people, why fight it? Relax and enjoy the new sensations. Hey, I want some new sensations, too. How about a little steam, girls? Here, let me pour a little water on the rocks. Oops! Sorry, I uh, spilled the whole bucket. <laughs> now it really is steamy, isn't it? Bird? What the? Do. Once again, Larry, the best man didn't win. And this time, you were in a one-man race. I'll be sure to return Burgundy's silver bracelet to her. Right. A nice hot shower always makes me feel like a new man. Me too, sweetheart! And here I am! Charlotte Donay reclines in her mud bath. You cast your most radiant smile at her. She barely glances at you. Good enough for me. Here's your battery, Char. But I might mention I had to go through a lot of trouble just to find them. Oh, they're perfect! Ooh-wee! There'll be a hot time in the old shower tonight. So, uh, what do you say? <laughs> How about I climb in that mud with you for a little good, dirty fun? <laughs> No, Larry, I have a much better idea. I've been in that Electroshock Exercise Center so much this week, I'm sure I know how to work it. Why don't we go over there for a little charge session? But don't they keep that door locked? Well, yes, but if you're smart enough to find me six heavy-duty D-cells in a health spa, I just know you can find a way into a locked door. You carefully strip away approximately two centimeters of insulation from the end of the wire without the three-pin grounded plug.
Cleverly touching the electronic lock with the bare ends of your electrical cord, you pass 120 volts at high amperage through the electronic lock's delicately printed circuit boards, frying them immediately with a gratifying shower of sparks. The lock gives up the ghost as its solenoid freezes in a permanently open state with a loud clink. Hey Charlotte, I got it open. Come on in. Good work, Larry. I'll be right there. Just let me take a quick shower first, okay? I'll meet you inside in a few seconds. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Okay, Char. I'll see you in a few minutes. Right in here, okay? After I shower, I'll meet you in the Electroshock Exercise Center. Well, that's the end of that. I know I'll never see her again. Well, I suppose I have plenty of time to explore this place. Hi, Char. That was fast. I really rushed through my shower. I hope you don't mind. I'm still dripping wet, and I didn't have time to put on any clothes. Uh-huh. Uh, no. Uh, that'll be fine, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but don't you need to be fully grounded, babe? Oh, don't worry your pretty head about me. Just take off all your clothes and hop up on that table. Okay, if you say so. Now lie flat on your back so I can have total access to your entire body. Hey, this may work out all right yet. To begin, I'll just smear some randomly selected appendages with some of this electroconductive jelly. Next, I'll attach these little alligator clips to various parts of your body. Tell me this was gonna hurt. <laughs> Besides, if I'm on the table and you're on the floor, how can this be any fun? Oh, silly. Just wait until I get your juices flowing. You've never felt anything like this in your whole life. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Okay. Now, let me turn on the machine. I'm ready to crank up the voltage a little. Tell me when you start to feel it. Ooh, doesn't that feel grand? Feel good? I don't feel anything, Char. Strange. Well, let me give it a little more. There now. How does that feel? Great, isn't it? Great? I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling, but I don't feel a thing. Huh? I don't understand. I thought for sure I've been through this enough to know how to do it to you. Something's wrong, Char. Why don't you disconnect me and we'll just use his bench in the regular old way? What? I know 
there's something. Wait, there it is. Oh, silly me. Look, Larry, it's this cable. Fiddle-dee-dee, it isn't plugged in. After a full night of sparkin', a little nap feels good. Shibli, I hope you love this gown. I really think it's you. Oh, Larry. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, you little devil. Whatever can I do to repay you? Why don't you meet me tonight down at the beach and we'll take a midnight swim together? Just the two of us alone in the moonlight. What do you say? I say, uh, <laughs> I'll be there. Until tonight, Shubly. Shubly looks beautiful here on the beach in the moonlight with those waves softly licking the shore. I've been waiting for you. I brought a little something for us. Champagne. Chilled. With two glasses. Oh, Larry. I like that. Oh, oh yes. Oh, Larry, that's so nice. Have I ever told you I find your eyes exciting? No, but please do. Uh, well, uh, I find your eyes exciting. Oh, you do? Ah, uh, Shabli, would it be premature to request a little kiss? Take me, big boy. I know what you're thinking. Come here, you beautiful thing. Come here, you beautiful thing. Oh, man, Shibli. I've kissed quite a few women in my time, but... I've never experienced anything quite like that. Larry, perhaps you finally found someone who really knows what a man wants. Ooh, I was hoping you brought one of those. Here, let me have it. I'm ready when you are. Uh, <laughs> 
No wonder. <laughs> You remove the wide rubber belt from the Super Cellulite Bun Shaker 600. You cleverly loosen the bolts holding the filter tank's lid in place with your handy wrench. Ugh. You'd take anything. You tighten down the lid. You carefully rub the lard on your piston shaft in a slow, sensual, yet totally meaningful manner. Your mighty piston is now lubed and ready. Hmm. What if I wrap this elastic belt around the hose? Is this the moment you've been waiting for? Oh, yeah! Dr. Swinebutt's mighty cellulite drainage machine appears to be in perfect working order once again. Congratulations, Larry. Now you're ready for Gammy.
So did you do it, Larry? Did you fix the cellulite drainage salon? I sure did, Gammy. I told you I would, and I did. Would you like to be my first vict um, sucker um, patient? Would I? Follow me, bub. Whoa, baby. Welcome to Cellulite City. I'll be right behind you, Gammy. Assuming I can take it. What does she have that I don't have? I can think of at least two things. Okay, Gammy, here we go. Lie very still while I stick this in. Ooh! <laughs> Your thighs. Oh, I knew that. All right, Gammy, here we go. I hope I got everything fixed. For your sake, I hope so, too. Now, this may take a while, Gammy. No, oh, I don't mind, Larry. I've waited so long for this moment. I can't tell you how strong my feelings are for you right now. You're such a wonderful man doing all this for little old me. But could I ask you one teeny weeny little tiny favor? Could you bring me a fresh orange? The sound of this machine has made me want to suck on something, too. <sighs> Don't even think about it, Larry. Oh, why, thank you, darling. You certainly know how to treat a woman. Oh, but please don't stop what you're doing. I can just feel myself getting thinner and thinner, and I love it. I hope you'll remember all the trouble I went to when we're all done. You won't just forget about me, will you, Gammy? No, oh, don't you worry, Larry, my boy. You'll taste pleasures far sweeter than this orange. <laughs> yeah! Come on, Gammy. That's enough for one session. You've lost at least 16 inches. What do you say? No way. I'm no quitter. I want to have a girlish figure for once in my life. Just keep right on sucking, boy. <laughs> Remember, turnabout is fair play. Huh? Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, I sure could use a cool cloth for my fevered brow. In fact, I promise I'll make you a happy man, if I live through this. Oh, be sure to bring back a nice, cool cloth for my head. You know how good I'll look when you're done with me. Just imagine the fun we can have, Larry.
Your washcloth is now nice and cold. How refreshing. Here you go, Gammy. Oh, Larry. Just place it there, on my forehead. Ah, oh, that feels so nice, Larry. <laughs> I'm getting all soft and fuzzy inside. Well, that does cool my temperature somewhat. But now I think what I really want is a nice bottle of mineral water. Oh, you'd do that for me, wouldn't you, Larry Honey Bunny? I'll make you one happy man when you do, believe you me. Oh, Larry Honey, don't forget my mineral water. I'm so dry. You grab the bottle of mineral water from the tray, never knowing when you'll have a use for something without substance that's tasteless and overpriced. I brought your mineral water, Gammy, and I think you'd better check out your new body. You look wonderful. Hey, it's about time you showed up with it. I feel like my eyeballs are about to be sucked into my body. Turn this thing off! You're so... svelte. <laughs> my golly. Old Doc Swinebutt really knew his business, didn't he? My God! Look at me! Oh, why, I do look wonderful. All my life I've hauled around a rear balcony, and now it's finally gone! I can't wait to show every single person in La Costalata my new body. But, Gammy, I thought maybe tonight, you know, after I helped you, you and I could, uh... Oh, Losser, you're so idealistic. Why would anyone who looks as good as I have anything to do with anyone who pff, looks like you? <laughs> oh! Now that I can have any man I want, I intend to. Wait! Gammy! Stop! <sighs> Too late, Larry. She's gone. Good idea, Larry. It's a well-known fact that early settlers of the Old West often substituted cellulite when they ran out of whale oil. At least that's what Freddie Farkas, frontier pharmacist, told me. I told you so. She's just not good enough for you, my little manhandler. Oh, shut up.
Like you always say, a little warm champagne never hurt anyone. Besides, I earned this. Welcome to La Costa Lada's new automated in-room ordering system for room service. May I help you? Wait, don't answer that. See, there's no one here but us computers. Ha, ha. Pretty funny, ha. Huh? It's a little digital humor. You may press your selection at any time or zero to return to the menu. Press 1 for breakfast. Press 2 for lunch. Press 3 for dinner. Press 4 for morning snacks. Press 5 for afternoon snacks. Press 6 for late night snacks. Pouring the old melted ice into the little receptacle on the ice machine, you prepare to catch a few new cubes. You press the green button on the dumbwaiter's control panel and see the doors slide open. Now, how are you going to fit inside that tiny chamber? Oh, have I died and gone to heaven? Who are you? And which department of the spa do you represent? I don't recognize your strange uniform. Are you with the kitchen help? When did they start dressing retro? And why? Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Oh, I don't... Uh, wait, wait uh, actually, that's right. I, I do work for the spa. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer? <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Laffer? I'm Shamara Payne. Please state your business here. Um, and, well, um, I, I, I believe there was some, um, report downstairs, uh, about the dumbwaiter. Yep, <laughs> your dumbwaiter was written up. <laughs> Have you had trouble with your dumbwaiter? Dumbwaiter? No, not really. At least no more than usual. Ah. Oh. Are you just going to stand there doing nothing, Mr. Larry Laffer? Talk all you want. You'll never get her to raise those arms. Do you always sit here, Shamra? Just staring out at the ocean? Yes. Once I led a frenetic life. Double-clutching espressos at 6 a.m. power breakfasts. Concording my way across the pond. Why, I once even owned an Apple Newton. Wow. But one day, I finally looked at myself in my apartment's mirrored ballroom and realized I may be fabulously wealthy. I may be at the top of my chosen profession. I may hang out with the cognoscenti. Damn, I should have packed a thesaurus. But am I happy? Well, yes, I was. Quite. But more importantly, does my life have meaning? Why am I alive? 
What difference would it make if I just checked out? So, in what I felt was an extremely goganish move, I left my penthouse in the care of my servants and moved to this rather deserted island to live a Spartan life of contemplation and thought, living off room service and new age music until I can fathom my meaningless life. Rich. Good. Thoughtful. Bad. You carefully remove the large diamond and discard the stupid dog collar. You did it! Good idea! Your burning lamp bears a remarkable resemblance to the universal symbol of learning. Shamra, I hope you like this diamond. It was a gift from a friend of mine. Another diamond? Thanks, Larry, but I have dozens of... Oh, wait. It's a symbol, isn't it? Let's see. What could a diamond represent in your superior way of thinking? Hmm. This is a tough one. Diamonds are a girl's... No, it can't be about friendship. Could it be a way to cut through my cynicism and jadedness? I've got it! You're trying to tell me that even someone like me, who has been under great pressure for so many years, can use that pressure to transform myself from a dark mental lump of coal into a transcendent human of crystalline purity and beauty. Why, uh, yes, I think that. And you're saying I don't have to give up my tough exterior in order to achieve perfection. How wonderful, Larry. How insightful you are. How wise. How lucky. Why, thank you, Shamra. I'm glad you caught my little message. <laughs> I think you need to give yourself more credit than you do. For you, Shamra. An old lamp, huh? And burning with such an unusual fragrance, too. Why on earth would a man show up on my balcony, bring me out of my reverie, make me rethink my chastity, just to give me a sandy old lamp? Unless... Unless... Unless that old lamp is a symbol, a representation of... of... Of the lamp of knowledge! Surely this is no ordinary beach find, but rather a symbol of the importance of lifelong learning, of the pursuit of knowledge, of the need to continue to grow as a person throughout my life. Oh, Larry, I will continue to grow. I do want to keep learning new things. I just wonder where I'll be able to find another teacher as wise as you. Gee, I was just hoping we could burn it by the tub tonight, and you could play Susan Sarandon. You don't need another teacher, Shamara. I'll be glad to teach you everything I know. I have this, uh, object. Ah, so I see. It's beautiful. It is? It is. I'd like you to have it. Why, thank you, Larry. It's not only beautiful, but I bet it's important and probably meaningful, too. But exactly what is its meaning? Aha! Of course! To me, it symbolizes the important role that art plays in all our lives. And not just art, but the arts in general. Music, painting, dance, performance, sculpture, drama, all have the ability to move us spiritually above the fetid plane of our daily dreary existence and take us to a realm apart. A place where, if we're fortunate, another tiny fraction of the ultimate truth may be revealed, where we cease for a few fleeting moments to be these self-consumed blobs of protoplasm and share in the endless quest for true enlightenment. Gosh, I thought she could get a couple of bucks for it as scrap metal. 
You're right, Shamra. I'm glad you like it. I want you to have this flower. An orchid. How beautiful. How high school promise. But you wouldn't just give me an orchid, would you? That would be too simple. Well, I... No, this is not merely an orchid. Let me think. It's natural and beautiful and unique and... Wait, I see. You're using this orchid to symbolize the perfection and purity of nature. How natural things are best. How the world can create millions of these flowers, no two alike, just like human beings. And thus... With a simple flower, you are encouraging me to recognize my own individuality, my own uniqueness, my oneness with nature, my own connection to the everlasting life force. Hell, I just thought it was kind of pretty. I knew you'd understand. Shamara, I think you should have this pearl. Oh, Larry. I have no need for more jewelry. Besides, while this might be a large pearl, it does have a slight flaw over here. But wait, you're not just giving me yet another bauble. Your thinking is far too sophisticated for that. It is? You're right, it is. I see now what you're implying. It's true, I know. I. I've spent my life basing my opinion of objects upon their financial value instead of on their inherent beauty. Missing the beauty of the tree by acknowledging only the net profit to be gained by harvesting the forest. Missing the glory of a solitary canyon while recognizing only its landfill potential. Missing the solitude of a seashore while buying up the oil drilling rights. So exactly what is it you're trying to get me to see in this simple pearl, Larry? Uh, well... Oh, of course you won't tell me. That would be too simple. I know you want me to discover the meaning here by myself. Yes, of course. Hmm... Hmm... it. The iridescent shimmer of a simple sphere, created naturally by one of Earth's simplest creatures from the irritation of a single grain of sand, layered with bodily secretions over a lifetime, creating an object of classic beauty. You're telling me to accept the imperfections in my character that have been troubling me these past few months. To accept the irritations that life has handed me. To stop trying to remove all irritants from my life. To cover my irritations with layers of love so they become points of strength and beauty instead. I am? Uh, I am. Oh, Larry. I've never had a man talk with me this way. Treat me this way. Express things in such wonderful, subtle ways. Me neither. That's just the kind of guy I am, I guess. Shamra, I brought you this sterling silver bracelet. I hope you like it. Oh, Larry, I have no need for bracelets. Once I had hundreds of bracelets, nearly all of them better than this. Oh, I just thought perhaps. But wait... That's not what you're trying to say, is it? This isn't a simple gift, is it? I bet it's much more. The superficial old me would have seen this bracelet as merely a clumsy attempt at a cheap gift. Probably an ulterior motive, suspicious as always of a man offering me silver, in expectation of future rewards. But you, you're different. You're as transparent as my pants, teaching me to achieve a higher level of consciousness, a deeper understanding. You're helping me scale these mental walls I've built around myself these last few months. I... 
No, Larry, please, allow me to bring my thoughts to fruition. I understand now. It's obvious. You're not trying to buy me off with this cheap silver bracelet, are you? You're speaking in symbols, aren't you? You're challenging me to overcome my shallowness, and I will rest assured. But a silver bracelet? What can this mean? Oh, I'm so foolish. Such a lightweight. Of course I see it now. Your gift symbolizes the spirit of life itself. A ring with no beginning, no end. A solid circle chasing itself round and round the vast emptiness. Much like my quest for spiritual fulfillment, which looks like it must be far, far away, but which, when you finally open your eyes to discover it, has actually been right at your feet the entire time. Oh, Larry, your wisdom is so powerful. I believe I'm finally beginning to understand. I just thought you'd look good wearing nothing but a bracelet. Yep, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. <laughs> You're really catching on to me, Sham. Shamra, there's something I simply must tell you. May I whisper in your ear? Of course, Larry. But what is it? It's just a little something I learned recently. Oh, my God! But of course! Why didn't I ever realize that before? You're right. It makes everything so clear. I've been a fool. Oh, Larry, you are a sensitive, thoughtful, caring, sharing New Age man. Good thing it wasn't something dirty, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just thought you'd want to know. Shamra, I've given you all my <laughs> hard-earned knowledge. Now, will you share this champagne with me? Oh, yes, Larry. I would love to. I just hope that I can somehow find a way to express my appreciation for all you've done for me. Your wisdom has clarified so many things for me, enabling me to reach higher planes of understanding than I've even dreamed of before. You've shown me the purpose of life. You've given meaning to my otherwise meaningless existence. How can I ever repay you? Well, there is just one little itty-bitty thing that we haven't covered yet. Besides your breasts, that is. Sex. Uh, I mean, Shamra. Uh, don't you think it's time we uh, explore the inner workings of your inherent womanhood? Sex? Oh, Larry, I'm sorry to say that for me, sex is hopeless. You see, I've been celibate my entire life. During school, I was always too busy overachieving to waste time dating. Once I started work, I was under such pressure to succeed that I never allowed myself the distraction of men. If you think my understanding of life is weak, I regret to say I have no knowledge whatsoever of the sexual part of my existence. Are you trying to say... Yes, it's sad, but true. You're a virgin? <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. I hope I haven't disappointed you. Ah, Sham, don't worry about it. Remember, I'm here to help you in every way. Oh, could you, Larry? Is there any way you could do for me physically what you've done for me spiritually? God knows I'll be glad to try. But, are you willing to keep working as hard as you have been? Oh, I will, Larry. I promise. Then, uh, let's go inside, uh, sit by the fire, and begin drinking a little of this champagne. Oh, thank you, Larry.
I promise to give it my all. And here's to you, Larry Laffer. Thank you. 